Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make English muffins and this is what they look like. I think of an English muffin as kind of a cross between a pancake and a bread. And as you can see, they have a beautiful golden brown crust on the top and the bottom. And yet inside, nice and soft and spongy and with all those little holes. So a really easy dough to make. Uh, it's kind of like a no need bread. So the first thing you will need to do is you will need one and a third cups, which is 320 grams of milk. Now you can use either whole milk, like full fat, or you can use a reduced fat here. And you want to heat it just to lukewarm. I did that already in the microwave, but you could uh, put it in a saucepan and do it on the stovetop as well. And then once it's, you've heated that up, you're going to add one tablespoon, 15 grams of granulated white sugar, because an English muffin is not that sweet, but the little bit of sugar helps and it also helps with the caramelization. And then you want one teaspoon, four grams of salt, and then one tablespoon, 13 grams of melted butter. Now you could just melt the butter when you uh, put it into the milk and when you heat that up, you could do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is just stir this because I want the, um, the sugar and the salt to dissolve. And then it's a little warm. So I'm just going to leave it a couple minutes just to cool down a little. And then when we come back, we'll finish off our dough. Okay, so that's cooled down. So now in a large bowl, you want a pretty large bowl because the, uh, the dough is going to like double in size. I have two cups, which is 260 grams of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I'm going to add two and a quarter teaspoons, which is seven grams. Now I'm uh, using SAF Red Instant Yeast. And I really like the instant yeast because you don't have to proof it. You just mix it right in with the flour and it gives a really good rise. But if um, you don't have that, you just could substitute with just the active dry yeast, same amount but you will have to proof that in your lukewarm milk just until it like, gets all foamy. So don't worry if you don't have the instant, you could use the active dry. So I'm just going to, with my fingers, you could use a whisk, mix that yeast into the flour, and then I'm just gonna make a well and pour this in. So you can see it's kind of like, it's a, it's a bread, it's got the yeast, but it's kind of like a pancake batter. We're just stirring everything together. So I'm, you can use a wooden spoon or I'm just using a spatula. All we're gonna do is stir this until the, all the flour is moistened. Because after all, it is a muffin. And I always think of a muffin as easy. You want a really easy batter and this is it. So now we're going to have to let this proof at uh, room temperature for about an hour until it's doubled. Room temperature by that, I mean um, about 73 to 76 Fahrenheit, which is about uh, 23, 24 C. So if your room is colder than that, it's gonna take a little longer. If your room's warmer than that, it take less. Now in the winter, you know, our, our kitchens are typically a little cold. So what I do is with the turned off oven, I put, well, you have to cover this with some plastic wrap. I put this in my uh, turned off oven, but with the uh, oven light on. And that like is almost the perfect temperature for proofing. And you could do that with all your bread doughs. So I'm just going to cover that. I'm going to, I'm actually am going to put it in my oven with the oven light on for about an hour or until doubled in size. So it's been about an hour. And as you can see, our dough has risen. This is a really soft dough. It's kind of like I said, pancake batter, bread, kind of in between. So what is unique about an English muffin is we kind of, we don't bake it in the oven first. 
what we do is, like a pancake, we're going to either cook it on a griddle or in a frying pan. Now, I'm using an electric griddle, or if you use an electric frying pan that actually has a temperature control, you want to heat your griddle to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 150 degrees Celsius. If you are going to do this on your stovetop, either on a griddle or a frying pan, you want like a pancake, heat it up, medium heat, until when you put a little drop of water on it, it kind of bounces around. And I'm, my surface is non-stick. If yours isn't, then you will e either need to like uh, spray it or put some oil or a butter on there. So now, um, this batter is so soft, what we need is rings. Now you can actually buy English muffin rings. Um, I'm just using a tart ring that I use when I make little individual tarts. Uh, you want either, English muffins are typically a three or four inch, so that's seven and a half to 10 centimeters, so, you know, that's about the size I like. And mine are about three quarters of an inch tall, which is about two centimeters. You could go up to about an inch or two and a half centimeters uh, tall. And what you want to do is you want to grease the inside of your rings. I'm using a little melted butter with a pastry brush just around the inside. You could use a little flavorless oil like vegetable, corn, canola, even uh, safflower oil. And that way it won't stick. Just use a brush. And then we are going to put our rings like so. I find with this amount of batter, we're going to get about six to seven, four inch, uh, 10 centimeter uh, English muffins. So, and then what's unique about English muffins is they have a little uh, cornmeal or semolina on the outside. So I just take a little, I'm just going to sprinkle a little in the bottom because, you know, if you've ever bought English muffins, they always have that. Okay, so that's that. And then we will, we're going to scoop, because this is, like I said, a really loose batter. We're going to scoop about a third of a cup, almost like halfway up. I'm using an ice cream scoop. So a third of a cup is about, you know, 80 grams. So this is like, like a really big scoop here. And let's put it in there. And then what we're going to do is let these cook, I would say five to six minutes per side or until they're golden brown. So just let them sit five to six minutes. So it's been about five minutes. And before we flip them, what you want to do is put a little of the cornmeal semolina on top. And then we are going to flip them. So. If you're non-stick surface, you want a non-stick spatula here. And rings and all. Let's see if I can do that. And there we go. And then what we're going to do is cook them, I find, about six minutes on the second side. Kind of tricky. Don't burn yourself. So I'm just going to put the timer on six minutes because now I find we want an internal temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 93 Celsius. And I find I can't quite get it doing it on the griddle. So what I, what you need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius, because once the, the bottom side is golden brown, what I'm going to do is transfer them to like a uh, baking sheet and I've lined mine with uh, parchment paper you just spray it and then I'm going to bake them for like five minutes and that will make sure that the inside of our English muffins is nice and soft and done so so it's been about six minutes so I'm going to I'm going to flip this so I can show you so 
The underside is also golden brown. Take them off the heat. And then what I like to do is take the rings off and then transfer over to our baking sheet. If you need to, if, if they're sticking, just take an offset spatula and run it around the inside. Looks nice. A little hot. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> And I just wanted to show you, I did overfill one, which you don't want to do. And as you can see, it did leak a bit. Hopefully the ring will come off here. Oh, yeah, there we go. But it's one of the reasons why you don't want to overfill, about halfway. So now what I want to do is bake these for about five minutes or until they're cooked through. So our English muffins are now done. So what I'm going to do is just transfer them to a wire rack, let them cool completely, and then when we come back, we will try one. So let's try one. So really, you could just eat it just like this, maybe put a little butter on top, but I'm going to show you how to split them in half. Do not use a knife because you want to use either just use your fingers to kind of go around or I'm using a fork and you just just kind of go around poke with your fork all the way around the reason you don't want to use a knife is then you'll get a real uh, straight cut and you won't it kind of wrecks the texture and plus what we want is an uneven cut because you want to have all the, the nicks and kind of uh, nooks and crevices in the center to put your butter and jam. So, so there we have it. You will get it, it just, you know, if you use a knife, it's just not the same. So look at that. You get kind of all, it's kind of bumpy, which is perfect for our butter. Let me if I can get some. You can also use these to make like an egg sandwich. You could uh, fry an egg and then put either some cheese, you could put some ham, some bacon. So let's butter. And then I'm going to put some jam, my favorite. You can also toast these. Especially, you know, if they're a day or two old, because they store pretty well. Then what I do is I split them in half, and then I either put them in my toaster or under the broiler until they get nice and brown and crisp. But we're going to eat them plain this time. Oh. If you're like me, and I grew up eating English muffins, but, I mean... No one ever thought to make their own. You just kind of bought them. And then I saw them at a, at a farmer's market at a bakery, and I bought some, and then that was like I had to make some. So you know what? These taste fantastic. Every, I think they're better than the uh, store-bought. And they're not hard to make, and they store really well. You can freeze them, so you have to try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.